Hey guys, Mr. Barnes here again, and I'm going to be making a video today on linear equations and patterns. Um, this might come from a unit on linear relations. Um, one of the things that you often see on tests and exams is you might see a pattern like this one, and you have to come up with an equation that would represent the pattern and uh, could give you the number of squares for this example, depending on what diagram number. So I have a specific way of how I do this, and there, there are a couple of ways how you can do it, but I usually make a table of values. And how I do this, I always label uh, my pattern. So I'll call this 1, 2, 3, and that's my diagram numbers. Diagram number 1, 2, 3, so on. And what I want to do from that is make a table of values. So let me do that. Let me get my fancy table of values maker. And here we go. So I'm going to say one of the expectations I have for my students is to make a define my variable. So I'm going to say that n is the number of the diagram. I should say diagram number, I guess it would be easier. Diagram number. And s is the number of squares. So n, we already know n because we decided what that was. One, two, three. Okay? n is like my x, pretty much. And the number of squares, well, we can count those. In diagram number one, there are two. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay? So from our table of values, you sort of see the pattern that's going on. As n increases by 1, as this goes up by 1, this thing, s, the number of squares, increases by 3. Okay? So that helps us with our equation. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to start our equation using that knowledge. Okay? So I'm going to say the number of squares, s, is equal to 3n. As we know, as, as n increases by 1, s increases by 3. Now, this equation, we're not done yet. We don't know if this is correct or not. It might be, it might not be. Okay? So what we'll do, we'll do a little test. So if I have n is equal to 1, 3 times 1 is 3. It's not, we're supposed to get 2. So what can I do to get 2? Well, if I got 3 here, I need 2. All I have to do is subtract 1. And then hopefully that will give me a right answer. Let's try it. So 3 times 1 is 3, minus 1 is 2. Let's try it for 2. So we got 3 times 2 is 6, minus 1 is 5. So yeah, it works. Okay, so this would be my equation for uh, this pattern. Or some people might call it a relation. Same thing, really. Okay. All right. So some another follow-up question that often happens for these is how many squares are in the tenth diagram number? So we know our equation. Maybe I can drag that down here. There we go. Here's my equation. Um, so we know we had we're looking for the tenth diagram number. So that means n is equal to ten. Okay. So uh, all we really have to do is sort of plug in the number there. So my number of squares is equal to 3 times 10 minus 1. And we got a follow order of operations. Of course, we do our multiplication first. So we have 30 minus 1, and that, of course, is 29. So there are, in fact, 29 squares in that 10th uh, diagram number. Um, a lot of times this question will show up on a multiple choice where it's sort of all in one. You have the pattern, it might just ask you, um, it might not ask you to find the equation, it might just ask you how many squares are in the fifth diagram, where uh, I've seen students draw 10 diagrams, which is very time consuming. You can, once you get good at this pat at this type of question, you really don't need to make the table of values because you're sort of just doing the process in your head. So um, just be careful. This asks for a large diagram number. 50th, you're not going to be able to do that on a test, especially if it's a multiple choice question. Alrighty, let's try another one. Alrighty, so we got some stars here, and again, I'll label my, I'll label my patterns here. 
I'm going to quick table of values. Um, call it in and use S again for number of stars. I won't, I won't define them this time. You, kind of, you see that you should do it if it's on test, but I'm just doing it to save time here. So one, two, three, and there's one star. There's two stars, and then there's five stars. Wow, I really think this one should be at three stars. I'm going to make this one the third star. Otherwise, it's not going to be a linear relation. Sorry about that, guys. Alrighty, so this is my third star. Maybe I'll make it a different color here, just so it shows up to you guys. There we go. Alrighty, sorry about that, guys. Alright, so, same pattern. So what happens as N increases by 1? Well, S goes up by 2. So we start off with S is equal to 2N. As N increases by 1, S increases by 2. So let's see what happens. Well, we got 1 for N. So 2 times 1 is 2. We're supposed to get 1. So again, we're going to subtract 1 from this. Okay, let's try and see if it works for the next one. 2 times 2, n is equal to 2 is 4, minus 1 is 3, and we're in business. Okay, so this is our answer. All right, so same process, exactly the same. All righty, um, what diagram number has 15 stars? So this one's slightly different than the last one. This Last time we were given the diagram number, we had to find how many stars or squares. This time we're looking for the diagram number. So this gets a little trickier. So what we need to do now is where this S is, we need to put this in here. Okay, so we're going to go 15 is equal to 2 and minus 1. So basically, this is turned into an algebra problem where we have to solve an equation. Now, again, guys, you could, uh, one way you could solve this is taking, you know, an educated guess of what this might be. Put a number in, see what you get, right? Because you know if you're minus 1, then this thing has to be 16, so 2n is equal to 16, what's going to make that 16? We kind of have a guess it's going to be 8, right? But now if you had a huge number here, you'd have to solve algebraic this. That's what I'm going to do. Okay, so first thing I want to do is get rid of this 1, so it's a subtract 1. So I'm going to basically add plus 1 to both sides. So I end up with 16 is equal to 2n, which is what I said would happen. Okay. Um, now. Next thing I want to do is divide, get rid of this 2 in front here, divide by 2, okay? So then I'm left with, well, this goes away, so I'm left with n is equal to 8. So in the 8th diagram, there are going to be um, 15 stars, okay? Alrighty, I got one last question here, I think. And this one's a little trickier, okay? It's more of a, it's a similar type of problem, but except the fact that there's a little twist on it. All right, so this is a question where you have tables. So these are tables. These represent tables. And at each one of the flat sides, the person can sit. So at this table, we can fit uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, six people, okay? So this is the first table, six peeps. At the next table, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So table 2, we got 10 people. And table 3, maybe you can make a guess. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. We got 14 peeps. Okay? So this is basically my table of values. Okay, so as n increases by 1, the number of people increase by 4. So our equation might look something like this. People is equal to uh, 4n. Okay, so as number of pe uh, people increase by 1, or sorry, as the number of tables increase by 1, the number of people increase by uh, 4. So now, let's do a little check. I got one table, so four times one is four. I should get six. So plop a little two on here, and hopefully that'll work. Let's try it. So two uh, tables, so two times four is eight, plus two 
is 10. So yeah, we're in business. This is our equation. Alrighty. Okay. So, how many people can fit at 11 tables? Well, the number of tables is n. So this is just like the last question. We go 4 times 11 plus 2. So that's 44 plus 2. So 46 people. Okay. 46 peeps can sit at 11 tables. Alrighty, last question for this video. How many people are needed? How many tables are needed to sit 45 people? Well, this is not a very good question considering that we just found out uh, 46 people sit at the last one. So if you want to sit, uh, let's, let's solve the equation, see what happens. So we need 45 people. And we got 4n plus 2. So we're going to have uh, subtract 2 from both sides. Use it as a little bit of algebra practice anyway. Subtract 2 from both sides. So I'm left with 43 is equal to uh, 4n. Okay. So now we can divide both sides by 4 here. And let's see what I end up with. I end up with n is equal to 43 over 4. Let me break it to calc and get that as a decimal. It's going to be 10 point something, obviously. Let's see. 43 divided by 4. 10.75. Well, you can't have 10.75 tables. So, in fact, if you need, um, you're going to need 11 tables. Okay, you kind of could have got that from the last one without solving it. But um, it sort of uses a little bit of both your knowledge of decimals and things like that. So. Uh, hopefully this works out, guys. These are common questions. You really need to know how to do these questions. Uh, if you got any questions, message me on YouTube or check out my check out my uh, websites, or you can ask me in class. Thanks a lot, guys. See it. See it.